And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Uh, I'm going to uh, let you in on a little secret today, that this is part one of a two-part message. And part one is let your past propel you. Let your past propel you. It's interesting because it is in times such as these, and mainly more so during this time, between the time of November 1st around to the 31st of uh, if you will, I would even say the, yeah, the 30th of uh, December, that most people struggle with all that has gone, they've gone through, things that they've lost, things that they have experienced, the challenges of life, if you will, that uh, push people to a place that it gets so dark that light can't break the dark. It gets so difficult until kind words can't shift the environment or the atmosphere. Times like these when people run and hide and bury themselves, if you will, in their own uh, 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 work or bury themselves in, in, in parties to not deal with the problem that they have to allow to push them. I'm, I'm going to deal with this today. I'm going to get everybody out of a place where they don't think they can get it, but I'm, I'm going to help you today. It is, it, 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 is, it is times like this where bad news only uh, creates more trauma and more hurt. And I don't know about you, but uh, it has been most difficult in this time, not because of what I personally experienced, but more so because of what I see the world going through that it doesn't have to go through. Y'all with me? Too many times people are trying to fix something they cannot fix because God broke it. And when God breaks something, it is not for you to pick your hands up to try to fix it. It is for you to run to him for the help that you need. And so what has happened today, many folk have now made a decision that they're going to fix it themselves. They're going to find a way to fix it. And people, if you will, are dying because folk are ignorant. I, I shouldn't have said that. I should, no, I should have said that. Because people are ignorant and getting people to believe some of the craziest things. And what is happening is they're not allowing their past to propel them to a better place. It's interesting because every time we look around, people are so worried about their past. They look at their past through a very, very dark lens instead of looking, to, looking at they pass through a lens that uh, uh, shows them how the goodness and the mercy and the kindness of God has kept them and lifted them and changed them. When I thought about this text and I read it and I, I looked at it and I said, Lord, I see what you're telling me because it is not the fact that I got a pass. The fact is that my past has got me where I'm at. Too many times people want to stop and, and want to become frustrated over what they uh, have experienced. But, uh, and then the other problem is people begin to make you think your past is the reason you're failing now. No, your past has nothing to do with your present failure. Your present failure has to do with how you approach the present time. And too many times people want to blame it on their ancestors. Your ancestor didn't sin, you did. I ain't going to get no help in here. Your ancestor, your ancestor didn't steal nothing, you stole that. Your ancestor didn't lie, you lied. Stop putting it on your ancestors. It's generational, ain't no generational curse. That's you that lied. That's you that stole. That's you that cheated. It ain't your ancestors that got you in the predicament you're in. You did that. Somebody ought to shout glory. Amen. And it is difficult today because so many people are twisted in their mind thinking that it is because of what uh, uh, happened, because of what someone did, turned them out to what they are. I asked the question several years ago, what is the difference between a young man who is born in the ghetto with nothing and he raises, rises to the level 
of a CEO of a Fortune 500 company and a rich boy, a rich young man who is born in the suburbs that has everything given to him and all he does is squander it and lives homeless for the rest of his life. The difference is the ability to embrace who they are and be confident that they're able to exceed where everybody else say they can. That's the difference. That that poor man rises and that rich man falls. Amen. It is, it is, it is in this place where I take my, 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 my point of reference. Because I want you to understand something that when Jesus was getting ready to come on the scene, it was important, if you will, for God to establish his purpose and his plan. It was not for him to come on and to, to rest upon the laurels of his past, but to become to establish his own legacy in the present future in which he lived. Somebody ought to say amen. It is interesting because many of us are so frustrated with how we were raised that we missed a many of the opportunities that were presented to us. And what I mean by that is going up the ladder is difficult because fear is one of the most, m most prevalent things when people are climbing a social, economic, or professional ladder. The first question is, can I deal with these people who they want me to be over? Oh, I'm going I'm to talk for a minute. Well, guess what? If you don't think you can, then guess what? You won't. And that's why people are still sitting in offices for 30 years and we're telling them, I should have had that position. Well, you don't want to be over nobody, so you can't do it. So the reality of it is, fear has to be dealt with the way that it needs to be dealt with. It is a necessary emotion. Why is it necessary? Because you ought to fear some stuff because it can ultimately kill you. But you shouldn't fear everything that God puts you in because if God puts you in it, he's more than able to carry you through it. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. So fear a man of climbing a ladder or getting on a roller coaster, you should have that because there's no guarantee that the roller coaster is going to stay on track. Somebody ought to say amen. But when it comes to following God, amen, there ought to be some fear there. There ought to be some reverence that if the Lord got me in this mess, then he's surely able to guide me through it. Lord have mercy. I'm grateful you ought to look at your neighbor and say, I feel that thing. I feel that. Because I'm in something right now that only the Lord can bring me through. Only God can help me get through this thing. And if I start thinking about where I come from, I'll stop and I'll quit. I'll throw my hands up, I'll throw my towel in, and I'll, I'll quit, and I will miss the success that is coming my way. Hallelujah. Too many times, amen, many people, even more so in the church than ever before, amen, they try to find something that makes holiness better, amen. And to be honest with you, anything that you put up against holiness will only dull its shine and its glimmer. Anything that is not like God that you put up against it will only take away from its impact and its effect. Amen. And so what God does is he certainly wants us to understand that everybody has a past. That everybody has, if you will, things that are not always good to look at. Things that they've done that are not always the best. And I'm not talking about folk who are not saved. I'm talking about folk that have been born again, got a past in holiness. You done done some stuff that you're not proud of. You've done some stuff that you had to confess. But I stopped by to tell you that those things are designed to propel you. Those things are designed to push you beyond the limits that you have set on yourself. You ought to nudge your neighbor and say he's talking about you right now. Amen. And if your neighbor ain't next to you, you ought to just touch yourself and say, he talking about me right now because I've allowed things that I've done to stop my progress. I've allowed things that, I've, that happened in my life to hinder my flow and my anointing. Can I get a witness in here? Man, and so Jesus, if you will, now, as the Lord begins to open up Matthew after 400 years of silence, after, after, if you will, Micah, and between that time, the Maccabees began to write. 
Amen. And Joseph Maccabee writes, who was a warrior, begins to write his own book. And I just want you to know that, amen, that's why many people don't know about some of this. But the Maccabees wrote about what the prophets were writing about. But gee, God had to say, hold on just a second. It's time I make a shift so everybody understands that Joseph Maccabee, though a great warrior, and though, if you will, he was a dynamite person who was victorious. He is not the one to write about the power that I'm getting ready to dispatch into the world for those who have a past that don't think they can get over and become more than they thought they could. So what he does is, along comes Matthew writing. Matthew begins to write, and this is unique because Matthew has to write after he's chosen. Oh, powerful but God does what he did to Moses he does to Matthew Mark Luke and John he does not make them right before he gets here they write after he gets here Lord I wish I had somebody in here that say you just don't know my story because it hadn't been written yet my story may get written after I come on have mercy Lord have mercy God already knew what he was going to write but he didn't let them write till they got mature enough to write, till they experienced something with God, in, with, with, with the Lord, before they wrote. So here the Bible let us know, and the way Matthew writes, he begins with the genealogy of Jesus. He begins with it because he wants us to understand, amen, how God operates and moves in the world today. And I just want you to put yourself, if you will, in the scripture for just a moment so that I can help you break some of the yokes that have you bound. Because you should not go through this holiday season trying to figure out whether or not you are worthy of what God is getting ready to do and unleash in your life. Are you worthy what God is getting ready to do because pressure is a part of it. Change is a part of it. So here the Bible lets us know that the very first person that they assign or assign to the genealogy of Jesus is Abraham. Take notice if you will. He does not start with Adam. He cannot start with Adam because Adam didn't have enough faith to trust God in the garden. So he he has to start with Abraham. Why does he start with Abraham? Because Abraham is the father of faith. Abraham operated under grace and not law. Abraham operated and moved by the unction of God. When the Lord said go, he went. When the Lord said stop, he stopped. When the Lord said give me your only son, he took him to the mountain to slay him. And the Lord gave him a substitute because he could not give if it could not take Isaac because then it would have damaged his sacrifice because God gave his only son and if Abraham gives his only son then Jesus' death has no impact in our life somebody ought to clap their hands give God praise if you will Lord have mercy. Amen. He goes on to talk, if you will. He then goes and moves, if you will, to Isaac. Because Isaac, if you will, is unique in a very special way. Isaac does not fight his father. He is obedient even unto death. He gets on an altar when he is not a child, but he is a young man in his teens or his 20s. He gets on the altar bound, and his father puts him there. So Abraham has to be strong enough to lift him, but Isaac has to be humble enough to trust him. Isaac has to be obedient enough to realize that if I got to go on the altar like every other lamb, there must be something in this thing. You ought to look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, I feel like I'm on the altar of sacrifice. I don't feel like anything is going my way, but let me pause for just a moment, and I'm going to tell you, look over in the thicket. There's a sacrifice for you too, and that sacrifice is Jesus Christ. Somebody ought to shout glory if you will. He goes on to talk, and he deals with Jacob. Why does he deal with Jacob? Because Jacob is nothing but a deceiver, just like many of us used to be. 
and some of us are trying to be, uh, trying to fake it till you make it. Nah. No, what you need to do is wrestle with God. Uh, you, need a, you need a wrestling match with him. Uh, God's going to meet you one night in your dream. Uh, he's going to wake you up out of your sleep, uh, and he's going to wrestle with you till he changes you. Uh, I wish I had somebody in here uh, that said, I thank God for my wrestle moment uh, when I thought I could not make it. Uh, when I thought I was doing just enough, uh, but the Lord shook me out of my sleep, uh, took me out of my pedestal, uh, took my mind and changed my heart, uh, wrestled me under submission, uh, but I held on until he blessed me. Uh, somebody ought to say, I need a moment like that. Uh, I'm on my way there. Uh, and so every one of these men... Uh, allowed their past to propel them into greatness. Uh, can somebody shout glory? Uh, they talk about Boaz. Uh, and Boaz is, is a type, if you will, uh, or a shadow of Jesus Christ uh, because he is the nearest kinsman. Uh, the law of the nearest kinsman when Ruth uh, and Naomi didn't have anything. Uh, amen. And along comes Jesus. Uh, somebody ought to shout glory. Uh, amen. Along comes Boaz. Uh, and he sees her laboring in the field. Uh, and he tells his workers, uh, leave her something on purpose. Uh, can I give you some powerful stuff here. Uh, Boaz wasn't worried about his past. Uh, and neither was Ruth worried about hers. Uh, she didn't have anybody. Uh, but she knew that she had to take care of herself. Uh, so she worked hard every day. Uh, and let me show you what God does. Uh, if you realize that you can make it, uh, God knows how to supply every need. Uh, and just like he sent, gave her something on purpose uh, out in the field, uh, Jesus sent something on purpose back into the world called the comforter. Somebody ought to shout glory. Somebody ought to shout thank you. So Ruth, if you will, she goes home and said, guess what? Boaz is leaving me something on purpose. She said, go lay at his feet and uncover his feet and lay there. Somebody ought to shout glory. When you need something from the Lord, you go lay down at his feet and God knows how to bless you. God knows how to lift you and won't, he will not ignore you. Somebody ought to shout, my past is propelling me into the greatness that I cannot imagine and I'm going to be all right. Somebody ought to shout, thank you. Hallelujah. But here comes the twist. Somebody ought to shout, yes. The twist is he's got some folk that are really not what you want in your family. There's a woman by the name of Rahab, a prostitute, a harlot. She sells herself to men so they can get pleasure from her, laying on top of her, misusing and mistreating her. But I thought I would tell somebody that she's in the lineage too. But I thought I would help you that it's all right to have somebody nobody wants. That's why I'm in the body of Christ. Because when nobody wanted me, God picked me up and turned me around. Do I have somebody in here that say I used to be a Rahab, but now I'm in the body of Jesus Christ. Somebody ought to shout glory when Rahab let the spies out the window. She said, what I want you to do is lead, make sure uh, that I have a place of escape. Uh, and so what happens uh, is Rahab uh, is now a part uh, of the lineage of God. Uh, he leaves out Adam. Uh, he leaves out Eve. Uh, but he includes Rahab. Uh, what kind of God is that? Uh, a just God. Uh, a righteous God. Uh, a God that says uh, that if you are uh, no good, uh, downtrodden, uh, I'll take you as you are. Uh, somebody ought to say thank you, Jesus. Uh, God help us here. Uh, then he comes along. Uh, and then there's a man by the name of Obed. Uh, 
And Obed has a son by the name of Jesse. And Jesse has a son by the name of David. Now David is a good warrior. He slayed the bear and the lion. Somebody ought to say amen. Whoop the child with a smooth stone. And everybody shout, David. Saul slew his thousand. But David is ten thousand. And Saul gets mad. But David gets anointed. And just I want to let everybody know. You ain't that anointed that you can't fall. Somebody ought to shout glory. I don't care how anointed you think you are. Everybody makes a mistake every now and then. Then David becomes a murderer and an adulterer. Somebody ought to shout glory. But David understands what it requires after you fail to get back in the right relationship. What is it? It moves you, if you will, to a place of repentance. And David said, create in me a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me. Restore the joy of my salvation. Somebody said, yes, Lord. Good God from Zion. That's why I can say, lift your heads. O ye gates, be ye lifted up, the everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Somebody say, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So he talks about, and I'm on my way to close, if you will, about Solomon. Lord, have mercy. The only thing David missed was the fact that he couldn't build the temple, but it was given to Solomon. And after Solomon built the temple, they penned this scripture because Solomon went to God and said, Lord, if we continue to do these things, what shall I tell the people? What shall I let them know? And so he says, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear, they will hear from heaven. I forgive their sins and heal their land. But we all know the story of Solomon. Solomon became an idol worshiper. Built groves to idols. But built the temple of God. I wish I had somebody in here. You ought to shake yourself right now. And say, Lord, don't let it happen. Because I've got comfortable with how good you are to me. I've got comfortable with what you've allowed me to do. What you've allowed me to come through. But don't let me get comfortable. That idols be my end. But let my praise be real and solid. Shout glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So he goes on, and he names some other ones. Rehoboam, it was exiled. He talks about Jehoshaphat, the good king. Somebody ought to shout glory. Lord, have mercy. And then he talks and goes on to Zerubbabel. That Zerubbabel reconstructed the tabernacle, the temple. But that's not where God was. But they thought God was in the temple. But I stopped by to tell you, between Micah, between Malachi and Matthew, there were other historical writers who write about what God was and how powerful he was. But they admit they skipped over Isaiah. And so the Bible lets us know that in Matthew chapter number 1 and verse 18, it says, Now the birth of Jesus was on this wise, that when, Mary, when his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, in other words, they were already engaged. In fact, the marriage had already taken place, but the ceremony had not happened. I wish I had a witness in here. Do I have any brides that are spouse to God? Do I have any brides that are spouse to God? You already married, but the ceremony ain't happened. I wish I had somebody that say, my past is getting ready to propel me. I wish I had a witness in here. He said, well, he said, Joseph, before they had came together, she was found with a child 
of the Holy Ghost. And I like this because God does not worry about Mary's eggs. He said, keep your eggs. What I'm going to put in you is able to regenerate Good God from Zion. It don't need no human help. It just needs some human skin. Somebody ought to shout glory. And while Mary was pregnant, somebody shout yes. Joseph, who's in the lineage of Jesus, he goes to talk to him. He said an angel of the Lord had come to Joseph in a dream and say, please, don't put Mary away. That which she is pregnant with, as one writer calls a holy thing, good God from Zion, it is of the Holy Ghost. In other words, God took himself and put himself in Mary and never reduced himself. To his, but, but from his omniscience uh, didn't reduce his omnipresence uh, didn't reduce his omnipotence uh, but only moved him uh, into the human realm uh, that he might be a help uh, and a sacrifice for me and, uh, so watch this uh, when he looked at the lineage uh, I don't care if I got a prostitute uh, I don't care if I got a pimp uh, I can have some bad kings uh, I can have some idol worshipers uh, I can have some folk uh, that lied and cheated. Uh, I can have folk in my life uh, and in my legacy, uh, in my genealogy uh, that did not care about me. Uh, folk that divided my kingdom. Uh, folk that stabbed my, that took my power uh, and misused it. Uh, didn't love me like they did. Uh, but I'm getting ready uh, to send myself uh, to do the work uh, that no man can. Uh, he said this thing uh, that you have in you, uh, it is uh, God Almighty. Uh, for he said, uh, as the writer said, uh, unto us uh, a child is born, uh, unto us uh, a son is given, uh, his name shall be called uh, Wonderful uh, Counselor, uh, Mighty God, uh, Everlasting Father, uh, Prince of Peace. Uh, somebody shout yes, uh, somebody shout thank you. So then, when she talks to Joseph, he said his name shall be called Jesus. Though his background is messy and marred, though his lineage is damaged and ruined, though he may not have the best lineage, he's not pedigree. Somebody shout glory. He's not like Paul or Benjamin on both sides. He may not be like some of those that follow him, but he got some mess in his family. But his name ha, shall be a great name. Ha. His name ha, gonna change some stuff. Ha. His name ha, gonna set some stuff in order. Ha. His name ha, gonna make a way out of no way. Ha. His name ha, gonna build a bridge over troubled water. Ha. His name ha, gonna shift the atmosphere. Ha. His name ha, gonna change lives. Ha. And he said his name ha, shall be called Jesus. Ha. Because or where he come from huh? he gonna do huh? what nobody can huh? save huh? deliver huh? and help people huh? somebody shout thank you Jesus Woo! Huh? thank you Lord huh? so now huh? as I close huh? he said let me tell you huh? What he going to do, ha, he going to look in his lineage. Ha, he going to look at his genealogy. Ha, and he going to say, thank you for Abraham. Ha, thank you for Isaac. Ha, and thank you for Jacob. Ha, but what folk don't know, ha, I really appreciate Rahab. Ha, somebody shout glory. Ha, because in the midst of all of her mess, ha, she knew who to call on. Ha, she knew who to trust. Ha, I want to thank God ha, for David. Ha, because when I look at David, he's the apple of my daddy's eye. 
But even in David's weakest moment, huh, my daddy still loved him. Huh, my daddy knew how to get to David's heart. Huh, I thank God for Solomon. Huh, because Solomon, though he started off right, huh, he messed up in the end. Huh, good God from Zion. Huh, cost him his name huh, among the heroes of faith. Huh, somebody shout glory. Huh, in other words, everybody got to pay huh, for what they do wrong. Huh, but this is what he says. Huh, and y'all just bear with me. Huh, he said, but I thank God huh, for Joseph. Huh, when my mama Mary huh, was impregnated with me, huh, he had every Jewish right huh, to turn her in huh, for being pregnant before a time. Huh, every right huh, to say she's having an illegitimate child. Huh, that ain't mine. Huh, but he heard my father huh, say that child huh, is not even yours. Huh, it's mine. Huh, but I want you to raise it like it's your own. I, I want you to know every time I, you put your hands on it, I, that's me I, and my gift to the world. I, every time I, you teach him how to drive a nail, I, how to shape pieces of wood, I, you're teaching me, I, good God, I, how to navigate through this world. I, somebody ought to shout glory. I, he said, I want you to know I, that everything you teach him I, will propel him I, into his great Everything he learns from the carpenter will teach him how to deal with things. Somebody shout glory. Good God from Zion. That's why ha, when you deal with a Peter, ha, you got to know how to work that thing. Ha. Somebody ought to shout glory. Ha. Gave Peter the keys, ha, but called him Satan on multiple occasions. Ha. You ought to look at your neighbor and say, Satan. Ha. Look at your neighbor and say, Satan. Ha. You ought to tell your neighbor say, neighbor, ha. I ain't talking about you. Ha. I just sometimes I act like Satan. Ha. Sometimes I let Satan get the best of me. Ha. But guess what? Ha. It's propelling me ha, into my greatness. Ha. Somebody ought to clap their hands huh, and give God great praise. Huh. Lord have mercy. Huh. Good God from Zion. Huh. As I close, when I look at the text huh, and I close here, huh, it goes on to tell us, huh, and it's very clear and explicit. Huh. He said, and he, she shall huh, bring forth a son, huh, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Huh. Somebody ought to say man, huh, because he's going to save his people from their sins. And he said, now all of this was done that it might be fulfilled what was spoken of the Lord by the prophet. Say, behold, a virgin shall be with a child, shall bring forth a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel. Somebody ought to clap your hands for Emmanuel. And don't clap for my Emmanuel, but clap for the Emmanuel who is the God with us. In other words, he's telling I want you to know uh, that what you have with you, uh, it is not my son, uh, but it is my power. Uh, it is my anointing. Uh, what you see in the flesh is the sacrifice. Uh, that is the propitiation uh, and the advocate mediator uh, for everyone who is born of a woman. Uh, anybody that got flesh on you, uh, God knows what you feel. Uh, he knows what you're going through. Uh, and so he is. Uh, then Joseph being raised, uh, good God from his sleep ha, did what the angel of the Lord told him ha. he said hold on just a second ha. this is such a powerful thing ha. this is such an amazing thing ha. what's going to happen to me ha. if I know this and I take her ha. you know how it is ha. she already pregnant ha. and folk gonna ask the question ha. did you consummate ha. people gonna ask questions ha. man that was a quick ha. you know y'all just got married ha. she pregnant already ha. you know they doing the math. Huh? I ain't getting no help in here. Huh? You ought to tell them, do the math. Huh? It's good math because huh? it's God's math. Huh? Your math don't measure up huh? when God is working in my life. God, I wish I had a witness. Huh? He goes on to tell him. Huh? He said this thing, huh? and here it is. Huh? He said that when he was born, huh? somebody said the angels cried. Huh? Peace on earth, huh? goodwill toward me. 
But I stopped by to tell everybody uh, that this propelled Joseph uh, into a great place uh, that he's written uh, in the scripture. Uh, good God from Zion. Uh, it propelled Mary uh, into a great place. Uh, but what it did, uh, that even though Jesus, uh, his past was marred with sin, uh, his past was marred with distrust, uh, deception, and evil, uh, he still uh, took his past uh, and allowed it to propel him uh, into the great things that he would do. Uh, and so the Bible says uh, that when he was born, uh, jo Joseph looked around uh, and somebody said, Joseph, uh, what you gonna name him? Uh, you ought to name him Keyshawn. Uh, you ought to name him George. You ought to name him Steve. Uh, you ought to name him Carnell. Uh, you ought to name him Nicholas. Uh, Joseph said, no. Uh, his name is Jesus uh, because he come to save. Uh, it's the very fact of who his daddy is. Uh, puts him in a place uh, like none other. Uh, and I stop by to tell somebody, uh, let your past uh, prepare you. Stop letting your past hold you down. Let the wrong that was done propel you to greatness. Let the hurt that you experience propel you to healing. Let folks stabbing you in your back propel you to compassion. Stop letting your past block you from the greatness that you can become. I'm so tired of people living below the expectation of God. He said uh, that greater works than these uh, shall ye do. Uh, we ought to be leading uh, in every category in the community. Uh, we ought to be, if you will, uh, not that we ought to have the position. But we ought to have the impact. Somebody ought to clap your hands and give God great praise. So in my close, it is important for all of us to understand that what the Lord has brought you through has brought you to the place that you are now. And I thank God uh, for the place I'm in now. Uh, good God from Zion. Uh, to be miserable in this place uh, only hinders my progress. Uh, to be miserable where you are uh, only hinders your vision. Let me tell you something. Uh, one of the books that everybody ought to read uh, is Outwitting the Devil. Why? Because the devil knows how to get you. If the devil can make you fear and make you question your ability, then he's making you question God. Because how, why do you say that, Pastor? Because God said, I'm making you in my image. Now I'm going to make you in my likeness. So if God made everything that was good, it was still good when he made it. When it fell, it was still good because he saved it. And how then can we who are saved think we are no good? Your past has to be energy to propel you. Because then you ought to look back on and say, I see the goodness and the mercy of God. Too many people or allowing your past to grab you by your leg, your feet and cause you to say, if I go, what are they going to think? If I say this, how are people going to respond to me? One of the things that I live by as a pastor, and I know what, my, what the Lord called me to do, I understand that very clearly. Right now, I'm keeping asking, what, what are you trying to teach me? This, at this moment, I'm asking what, what, what I need to learn. Accelerate this class. <laughs> I want this, this guy, I want him to accelerate classes, but it's, you can't accelerate it. You can't do it. So I don't care how much I ask, he's going <laughs> to. No, I need you to feel what you feel. And I need you to feel it so, so much that you can't even explain it. But then I need you to still come up and stand up and encourage people and they question how you do it. You can tell them it ain't nobody but the Lord. So many of us, God opens doors and the Lord says, go. And we knocking on this one. 
He said, go that way. We knocking over here. That door only says hard. This door says easy. We knocking on the easy door. But y'all remember what Sister Herman said? Y'all remember what Sister Herman said? She said, if you live for God hard, it's easy. But if you live easy, it's hard. So go through the hard door. That's where the way is easy. And the yoke is light. The yoke is easy and the burdens is light. You're going through that easy door because it's easily open. And sometimes we go through the easy door and we accept and we accept stuff that we don't and should not accept. And so when we look at the text, it is important to understand that Jesus came through a lineage of people. Now watch this. There were 12 tribes. Came through Abraham, came through Jacob, came through Perez, came through all these. And then there's another tribe that got some people in it. But Jesus come through a tribe where he got a prostitute, a murderer, an adulterer. He got folk that divided his kingdom. He got a bunch of kings that don't know nothing, ain't doing right. You got folk building the temple of God and only playing long enough until they can get what they want. And then they turn. And every bit of that, Joseph and Mary got to deal with. And then Jesus got to deal with it. Because he said, and then there was Joseph who came out of that same group. And guess what? They were in Nazareth. And nothing good can come out of Nazareth. Am I in the right place? Am I preaching this thing? Am I, I'm lining this up. I just want to make sure I'm lining it up. Because folk think ain't nothing good come out the temple. But I stopped by to tell you there's a whole lot more that you all have yet to see what's coming out. I don't care who you are. Many of us, God has blessed. And there are things that he's going to make sure we accomplish. And you're not going to accomplish them the way you want. Life offers changes. But God expects completion. Jesus comes on the scene. Don't change his name. Even though there ain't no room at the end. And that's what we like to talk about Christmas because there ain't no room at the end. But I wanted this message to, as the Lord placed it on my heart, that we need to let our past propel us. Because in order for the manger to mean something to us, then we must be able to embrace our past, put our past in its right perspective, use our past as, path, past as the energy that propels us to places people don't think we could go. I can pull all my friends and ask them, say, do you ever think Tony be there? No. That, that joker was crazy. And he pastored. They got to be a God. Because what, don't Tony Thomas, I know. No. He was on his way to prison. He was trying to kill everybody. Literally kill everybody. I go get a knife. I didn't play. Thank God there wasn't a 504 IEP when I was in school. Thank God the social workers wasn't called on my grandmother when I was in school. CPS wasn't called on it when I was in school. The principal came and the teacher came to, the, to my house and they met me sitting on the porch Say, Ms. Croce, we're really trying to figure out what's wrong with him. But we don't know. She said, I'm going to beat the devil out of you. I said, she knew what was wrong. But I'm glad for my past. Because it has propelled me. And I'll say this to every teenager in here, every young person. I don't care how you were raised. It does not define where you will go. And to every middle-aged person in here that's got, still got a dream. Because it seemed like at 40, folk quit dreaming. I'm 50, I'm 50 something. I ain't getting no older than 50 something, Sister Lincoln. No more birthdays, only private birthdays for me from this point forward. 
I'm 50 something. Stand right there and hold it. When I get 70, I'll let you know. I'm holding on. Don't lose your dream because you had some hiccups. Use that fuel to propel you to great places. We got a doctor sitting in the house. Where she at is not the pinnacle of her career. It's not. She may be happy where she at, but God ain't. God, God may want to move her someplace, and he's going to make it difficult sitting where she sits. There's business owners in here that are just comfortable where they are. But God's going to put you in the heat of it. Because that's how you're going to grow. That's how you're going to thrive. And all of our teenagers, and all of our young people, don't lose your dream. I don't care what happens to you. Tony, Seth, I don't care what has happened. That does not define where you're going to go. The loss that you all have experienced is going to propel you to great places where people are going to wonder how y'all made it. And y'all can tell them it was the prayers of the righteous that avail much. And I don't want that to happen to any other child in here. I don't. But they have to take it and use it as fuel to propel them. Sister Perry, She's used, she, 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 that, that fuel's, that, 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 that stuff becoming fuel. And, it's, and we've yet to see what's happening. We've got too much work to do. And God is calling, counting on us to see it through. Is there one today?